Good evening guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a perfume video. I feel I am long overdue for a perfume video and this is going to be a bit of a perfume update. So I'm going to be talking to you about roughly 15 to 20 fragrances here. Some of them are ones I've recently brought into my collection. I wanted to update you and let you know how do I feel about them a week or two later. Am I still in love with them or am I still enjoying them? Especially ones I was on the fence about like the Wood Sage and Sea Salt. And there's a couple of oldies but goodies. I want to let you know where my thoughts are on those. And then there's a couple that have really been sort of taking a seat on the back burner and have not been getting love and I'm tempted to declutter. So I just wanted to kind of sit down, have coffee, and just have like a nice casual chit chat about some fragrances. I think it's really interesting hearing what people are feeling and thinking about their perfumes and their collection. I think it's really interesting how over time our tastes can change and I love watching people's collections evolve and I love just hearing people pick up perfumes and talk about them and tell me their thoughts so hopefully you guys enjoy the same kind of thing so if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfume so if that's your thing I would love if you head on down and consider subscribing also feel free to follow me on Instagram I would love to get my Instagram to 10k please help me do that if you're on Instagram go over and give me a like it's totally free and then we can have some conversations over there about things that we love together and yeah, with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. All right, guys, so before we get into this, if you hear a frog in my throat, it's because, oh, is the UPS man here? No, he's not. <laughs> it's because I do have a little bit of a tickle in my throat slash a little bit of a cold going on. So if I sound a little bit nasally, that's why. So here sitting in front of me, I have quite a beautiful scene, all of my favorite things, flowers, candles, perfumes, coffee. And I really just wanted to take the day to sit down and talk to you guys about some perfumes. So there are some perfumes in here, as I mentioned in the intro, that have really kind of fallen to the wayside for me or by the wayside. And I don't really gravitate toward them anymore. I don't wear them. There's one or two in here that I'm pretty sure I can declutter. There's no sense in holding on to perfumes that are not being used, that are just sitting in a bin waiting for my end of year declutter. If I get to a point with a fragrance where I literally just throw it in the basement and say, okay, you can stay until the end of the year when I do my declutter. To me, what is the point then? I may as well just pass it along and make room for something new. So why don't we go through this um, one by one. I do have a couple of samples here that I want to share with you that potentially might be full bottle worthy, whether or not for me or for somebody else. Um, I want to tell you about my Jo Malone's. How am I feeling since I got them? Am I regretting any of those decisions? Do I regret bringing any of the other ones back that I had recently purchased? And I also have a couple of oldies but goodies in here as well just for fun. So I also have some little papers here so that I can spray the fragrances if I need to refresh my nose as to how any of them smell, especially the um, little testers. Okay, so why don't we just start in the back? So as you can see, I have both of my good girls here. So this is the good girl Légère, and I also have the good girl Supreme. So I'll tell you my thoughts on these fragrances, you guys. And I really like both of them. Obviously, I like both of them, otherwise I wouldn't have brought them into my collection. Um, the Légère has kind of been my favorite Good Girl fragrance. The Supreme is really nice because it smells like the original Good Girl, but it's a little bit sweeter, it's more berry-like, and the Legere is a little bit fresher and lighter and not so heavy or like dusty, if you consider the original one to be a little bit like dusty. This one has less of that dustiness. It's a little bit fresher and lighter. So where I'm at with these ones, you guys, I don't know what it is, but if I ever wear either of them, they kind of rub my nose the wrong way. I don't particularly love that good girl DNA, even in these two fragrances. I'm not sure why. On paper, they're great. And there have been times that I have worn both of these and really, really liked how they smell on me and how I like when I catch it on the wind and stuff like that. I was recently in Sephora and one of the girls working there was actually wearing the original Good Girl and she walked past me and I said, oh my gosh, you smell so good, what are you wearing? And she goes, oh, I'll go spray it for you. And she went and sprayed the original Good Girl on a piece of paper. I didn't see the fragrance. She brought the, bl the blotter card up to me. I smelled it and I said, oh my gosh, that smells so good, what is that? And she showed me and I was like, you're kidding. And I thought, I don't like the original Good Girl, but on her it smelled so good, and on the paper it smelled so good. I, I really don't know. I don't know if it has to be like a certain day or if I just like the way these smell in theory, but then when I actually wear them I don't like that. I'm not sure what it is, but something about 
the good girls just doesn't sit that good with me. So these two are contenders for being decluttered. I'll just tell you guys that right now. That's just how I'm feeling about it. They're just, they kind of fall to the bottom of my perfumes when I'm trying to decide what do I want to wear for a date. These would be two perfect date perfumes and yet they kind of fall to the wayside. So that's where I'm feeling about these two. Um, don't be surprised if you do see them in a declutter. I just, I just don't gravitate toward them. So yeah, that's how I'm feeling about the good girl and the good girl Supreme. So that's where I'm at with the good girls. Again, this the whole video is not necessarily like a declutter video. Um, definitely not. You can see some of my favorites in there, but just to let you know like where I'm at in terms of how I feel about these fragrances. Yeah, that's where I'm at with the Good Girl Legere and the Good Girl Supreme. Uh, next, why don't we talk about a sample and break things up a little bit. So this, I don't obviously have a full bottle. I will put a picture on the screen of what this is, but this is Brooklyn Ellis or Ellis Brooklyn's B. Now this is a very spicy, um, gourmand, sweet fragrance. It has lots of honey. I believe there's beeswax in here. I think there's also chocolate and vanilla, and there might even be a little bit of rum and maybe some sandalwood or something. I will put the notes on the screen for you. I don't quite have them memorized, but this would be a great option for people who sort of liked Killian's Angel Share, but maybe it was too masculine or too heavy or too woody. This reminds me a lot of Killian's Angel Share, but it's a little bit more gourmand. It's sweeter. It's more feminine and it's not as, it's not as strong in those like rummy wood components. This one does become a lot sweeter. The honey comes through a lot more and it has this chocolatey vanilla base and it is so, so good, you guys. You can see I've actually used a little bit of this. I'm gonna spray it on paper right now, actually. Okay, so I just sprayed the Brooklyn LSB on this paper. So the initial spray is quite spicy. I think there's actually cinnamon in here too. So it's spicy, boozy, woody, and the honey comes through a lot. It's very, very sweet. But what happens on the skin is this starts to dry down and become a little bit more vanillic and a little bit more sort of chocolatey and warm. And the deep dry down of this was so good, I almost bought a bottle. And then I talked myself out of it because I don't love spicy, boozy fragrances. And I would have had to get through the opening of this every single time to get to that delicious dry down. And I also don't like smelling overly gourmand. So even though this smells incredible, I know that I would have probably regretted it instantly because it wouldn't have been easy for me to grab and go. It wouldn't have been an easy reach. If you guys like gourmand fragrances, if you like honey, if you like something along the lines of Killian's Angel Share, if you like spicy rum, honey, vanilla, chocolate, if that sounds like heaven to you, then you definitely want to try Ellis Brooklyn B. And this does have very, very good longevity as well. Okay, so let's talk about another one that I had purchased a few months ago and I have not mentioned it in any video since then, um, probably because I just don't enjoy it that much. And I'll be totally honest with you guys, you know, sometimes, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who does this, sometimes you go into a store, you smell something, you really like it or you talk yourself into liking it or you sort of think that you fell in love with it you purchase it you bring it home you think it's the greatest thing ever and then you never wear it has that ever happened to you guys please let me know i'm not the only person who that happens to it seems to happen to me quite a lot actually i get very hung up in the moment it's kind of like trying on a dress in a change room and in the moment you think oh yeah i look so great this is good you know and then you get it home and it just sits in your closet and you never wear it so that's kind of what happened with this particular fragrance and i'm talking about tom ford metalique this is a beautiful bottle obviously it's absolutely stunning and this is a very aldehydic powdery vanilla scent it smells very clean, very fresh, kind of like laundry. It has a very clean ald aldehydic laundry um, vanilla dryer sheet smell. I told you guys when I first got this that it smelled like a girl who basically just showered in the morning and then put on a very crisp, freshly laundered outfit. And yet she has a subtle hint of this powdery vanilla. That's what this smells like. And it is good, but I am a little bit regretting getting this because I loved it that day. And I think sometimes you have days where you're really in the mood to buy something and you settle for things, you know, especially if that's all that's available where you are and you just like, I get in those moods. I get in those moods where I'm like, I just feel like buying a new perfume. And I think this was one of those days because I just, I just don't wear it. I have not worn this since I got it and I don't really want to wear it. And I don't know why it's very nice. I just, 
I'm kind of regretting getting this one. I really don't think I'm going to ever wear this, you guys. I... I don't know. I wish, I wish that I wanted to, but I'm just not going to. So this one I actually think I'm going to declutter. Um, I just know I'm not going to wear it. So that is Tom Ford's Metalik, and this one is going to be headed toward the declutter bin. All right, just had to have a sip of coffee to wet my palette. All right, what should we talk about next? Let's talk about, hmm, okay, let's talk about a couple of my newest acquisitions. So the Donna, Valentino Donna, whoops, was one that I just brought back um, only a week or two ago. So I haven't had this for very long and I am so happy that I brought this one back, you guys. I think I'm noticing that the performance is probably better on this than I gave it credit for to begin with. Um, this is a perfume, if you're new to my channel, that I had like probably three years ago, two or three years ago, I ended up letting it go because the performance just wasn't there for me. It just wasn't long enough lasting. It didn't project enough. I felt like, you know, it was kind of a waste. But this scent is just so beautiful and so classic. And it's one that I just keep going back to. And I absolutely love it. I think it is so classy and elegant. And I'm still 100% happy that I have this one back. It is one of my more elegant fragrances. It would be great for an evening out, maybe a formal occasion or a nice dinner or something like that. And it does smell a little bit mature. In comparison to Donna Born in Roma, they smell nothing alike. Like this and Donna Born in Roma are so different. I don't even know why they called the other one Donna Born in Roma. It could have just been something different. Um, but this one is a powdery iris vanilla leather scent. It does have a little bit of leather in there. Valentino is famous for using leather in their scents. A lot of their men's fragrances are leather heavy, which I absolutely love. My boyfriend does not. He's more of a fresh, um, a fresh like citrusy mineral C note guy. He likes his woody fragrances. He likes his aqua de Gio type of fragrances. He's not a leather fan. Um, I wish he was because I think the men's Valentino are stunning but yeah this one is just very uh, soft and feminine and the leather that's in here is not animalic or dirty or strong it doesn't smell like a car air freshener or leather seats or something like that it's just a very elegant beautiful leather very soft and I have been wearing this there is a little bit of a dint I actually think it's on my sweater right now I'm wearing a I'm wearing a pajama top I haven't washed in a couple of days and yeah, it just smells beautiful and it does last a long time on clothing. Skin, mm, not great, but on clothing it does last and it's just, it's just beautiful. And I mean, the bottle, you can't beat that bottle. It's so beautiful. So yeah, this one I'm still very, very happy that I brought this one back and that is Valentino Donna. Okay, so I have another fragrance that I recently purchased and I'm kind of wishing I would have bought a different one. And that one is from Guerlain and it is Eau de Lingerie. So this one here, this is, I don't think it's from the Art et la Matière collection. I think it's from the Les Except, Except, I don't know how to say it, Exceptional or Exception or something like that. Um, it's one of their exceptional fragrances. So it's a little bit higher end and a little bit more expensive. This bottle retails for $220 for a 100 ml, which isn't terrible, but it's kind of pricey. And this is a beautiful scent, but and I don't, I don't think any differently of the way that it smells. I still love how it smells. I think it smells very beautiful. It's a powdery, musky iris vanilla, again. Not unlike Valentino Donna, except this one doesn't have leather. And this one is also quite a lot lighter. And it smells very refined, very elegant, very soft, understated. Um, that perfect fragrance to wear if you did not want to offend anybody. Even, I feel, a newborn child would not be overwhelmed by this, even if you were snuggling a baby. This has a very like soft, motherly, clean clothing vibe. It's feminine. Um, I mean, it smells like clean laundry. It smells like clean laundry that had just been washed with a little touch of vanilla on it. It's very, very nice. And I'm not sure why I don't reach for it. I really don't know. I don't know if it's because it isn't a big perfume. I mean, this is the type of perfume I would wear for like cuddling, cozying up on the couch, intimate occasions, date night, except when I do have those occasions, I reach for something a little bit sexier. So I'm not really sure why I don't reach for this one. I'm not ready to let it go yet because it is stunning and I paid a lot for it and I still think it's a beautiful fragrance. I just don't reach for it. So yeah, I'm kind of wishing I would have put my money toward Rose Cherie, which is supposed to be um, 
like the next generation of French Kiss, which if you've ever smelled French Kiss, phenomenal from Guerlain. And that one has a lot better performance and it's a little more bold and has more personality. This one's kind of like, it's kind of bland, I'll be honest. It's beautiful, but it's kind of bland. Um, so I, I just, I don't know. I don't know if it just doesn't have enough oomph for me, if that makes any sense. Okay, so let's talk about another sample. This is from Bond 9, and this is New York Nights. I don't think I've ever talked about this one on my channel. Maybe once when I did a Bond 9 fragrance sampler review. So this is New York Nights. This is one that comes in that really interesting looking blue bottle with like the New York skyline on it. It's very colorful. I was tempted to blind buy this at one point because it gets really good reviews, and it is a caramel fragrance and I love caramel fragrances. Um, however, the general consensus seemed to be that people did not think this was a safe blind buy, so I thought I better get a sample before I bite the bullet. And I'm really glad that I did because Bond is expensive and I would have really regretted buying this. So let me tell you what it smells like. I do have it on a strip here. New York Nights has notes of gardenia, carnation, jasmine, patchouli, flowers, sandalwood, sea notes, caramel, coffee. So all of that sounds like, yes, this would be a safe blind buy. The two most prominent notes apparently are that coffee and that caramel. What I get from this, you guys, when I first spray it is straight up banana bread, like a chocolatey, banana bread. That's what I get. First of all, I like banana bread. I like eating it. I don't want to smell like banana bread. This doesn't smell at all to me like I would imagine like New York to smell like. I mean, I guess it does have some of those foodie qualities. If you've ever walked down the street in New York or been in Times Square and all of those smells that are around you, you know, there's like pastries and just all these unique different scents. And it, it kind of does remind me a little bit of New York, but it's very, very foodie. It's very gourmand smelling. I don't know. I just don't care for it that much. And I know I'm not the first person who's picked up banana bread. So let me know what you guys think if you've ever tried New York Nights. This is definitely not for me unless, I mean, I'll keep the sample. Maybe at some point in the future, my nose might change. But right now I get straight up banana bread and I don't like it. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to smell like that at all. Um, I think old me would have wanted to smell like this. I think two years ago I would have wanted to smell like this, but not now. So that is Bond 9 New York Nights. Not a winner in my books. Okay, so let's talk about one that I've had for a while and kind of was like one of my holy grail perfumes. It was also the only Ariana Grande perfume that I had for a really long time up until I received Cloud Intense and then I had that one for a while to try. And if you are not new here, then you know which one I'm referring to. And that is Ariana Grande R.E.M. So this was the only Ariana Grande fragrance I had in my collection. I really, really liked it. And interestingly enough, I've been moving further and further away from this one and I'm not sure why. I think just my nose is changing a little bit. I still like it. I still really, really like the way this smells. It's a cozy gourmand lavender scent. It's a little bit salty. It's a little bit musky. I always tell people it has that boyfriend t-shirt vibe. It has that clean skin vibe. Actually, it's quite similar to um, Clean Reserve Clean Skin. It's ha it's like along those lines, um, but this one's a little bit more sweet and gourmand and probably more synthetic smelling. And I still like it but for some reason I have moved away from it. I'm not ready to give it up though because this has been a favorite of mine for a long time. And I don't say that, I don't love a lot of celebrity scents. I'm just not a huge celebrity scent person. So for this one to be one of my favorites, that says something, I really, really liked this one. But I just haven't been wearing it as much. So it's kind of fallen to the wayside again. Again, I'm not ready to let it go, but it just isn't my favorite anymore. You know, it's not it's not among my top favorite perfumes anymore the way that it would have been if you would have asked me seven or eight months ago. So it's really interesting the way our noses change. And it's interesting too that, for example, something like Miss Dior 2017 is still a favorite after years, you know, where this one just no longer is a favorite. All right, so now let's talk about a fragrance that I have purchased gotten rid of, purchased again, and where am I at now with that fragrance? And the one I'm talking about is none other than La Via Belle, the original. This fragrance is really interesting. If you haven't smelled it before, which I'm sure you have, it's a very sweet, 
gourmand, powdery, patchouli fragrance. I think there's praline in here, iris, vanilla, um, some floral notes, and I believe patchouli as well. And it's a very heavy, sweet, loud fragrance. And there's a reason this is one of the best sellers on the planet. It's been a best seller since they released it. Um, it's feminine. It's very beautiful. It's a compliment getter. It lasts forever. The performance is incredible. There's reasons why this is such a hot seller. You guys, I just, I can not wear this. I have tried to wear this. I don't know if you can tell there's a little bit missing. It's not like I just bought it and then like let it sit there. I've been really giving this one an honest effort to, to wear it because I recognize that it has such great performance and it's so well loved and it's kind of like a crowd pleaser in a sense. Although a lot of people these days don't like La Via Belle anymore. And I think, I think they're not just tired of it. I think they legitimately don't like it that much anymore because it's very, very heavy. And I think there's so many other scents out there that are not quite as like suffocating as this one. This just gives me, it just makes me feel exactly that a little bit suffocated every time I wear it. It's very strong. It's very heavy. It's overpowering. It's overwhelming. I have not gotten any compliments when I've worn this. I've worn it around my boyfriend. He has not said, oh, you smell really good. Or like, oh, I really like your perfume. And if I'm wearing a perfume he really likes, he'll say something. He'll be like, oh, you're wearing that like sexy perfume. You know, he's never said anything with this one. And actually he has made, he has said something once. He said, your perfume is so strong. I could smell you in the hallway. But that wasn't a compliment. <laughs> that was like, what on earth are you wearing? It's so strong that the whole building can smell you. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Anyways, this one just is not working out for me, you guys. And I feel a little bit embarrassed because yes, this is my second time bringing it back to my collection. Um, you know, wanting it to work, thinking that this is a staple, this is a must have, this is, you know, so many people have it as a staple, must have whatever. Um, but you guys, it just isn't going to work for me. Um, I really like, a lot of the other Livia Bell flankers better. The new one that just came out, the Wee Livia Bell, that one has some fruitier notes in it. It's not quite as um, powdery and strong as this one. That's where I'm at with Livia Bell. I may as well update you and tell you where I'm at so that you're not, you know, shocked when I decide to pass it along. But this one is one that I think can make its way to the declutter bin because I'm just not going to wear it. I know I'm not. It's sitting in the basement waiting for that epic declutter of mine that I'm going to be doing. So yeah. Livia Bell, I've pretty much decided just isn't for me. Okay, so if you guys watch my channel, you know that I recently started getting a lot more into Jo Malone. I have a couple Jo Malones here. I don't have the Mimosa and Cardamom here because I haven't had a chance to wear that one yet since I've got it. And I only want to talk about perfumes I've actually worn so that I can give you like a proper how I feel about it. I don't think it's fair to say I'm still happy with a perfume if I haven't had a chance to wear it. So I do have two here. Also, very soon, you guys, I am going to be going to a Jo Malone counter to re-smell and re-experience all of them, and I'm not going to be rushed or anything. It's going to be really nice, and I may even come back with another Jo Malone, or I might discover that there's one that I love there even more than these two, but the two that I have here that I recently got are the Peony and Blush Suede and the with sage and sea salt. So probably two of the most popular <laughs> and cliche Jo Malone fragrances that are out there. And let me tell you my thoughts. So you might be able to tell there's a little bit of a dint missing from the peony and blush suede, more so than the wood sage and sea salt. And that's because I've actually made this one my scent of the day a couple of times. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this, you guys. I'm still so loving this. Like I'm still so happy that I got this one. I had gotten those two little, um, tester bottles or not tester, but those like deluxe samples from Sephora. And that was when I really kind of started to think I might like these fragrances in my collection. And, um, my favorite one is the peony and blush suede. I actually made it my scent of the day earlier today. It was very nice. I was able to wear it for a work education day. So it wasn't overpowering. Nobody said, Oh, you're wearing perfume. You're not supposed to be wearing perfume, you know, but at the same time I knew that I smelled really good. And this one, you guys is gosh, it's so beautiful. I think that's why some of these other fragrances are not working for me anymore, like the Olivia Bells and the Good Girls. They're just too strong. They're just too overwhelming. Um, I'm really liking these more like refined, soft, feminine, 
like delicate fragrances. I don't know what it is, but my God, this is beautiful, you guys. Oh, I just, I cannot get enough of this one. So there's red apple in here, there's peony, there's suede. I can't remember what else is in here. I think there's another floral note. It's quite a simple fragrance, but just such a beautiful fragrance. And it just smells very feminine, very effortless, very elegant. It just smells like a good, clean girl. <laughs> I don't know what that is supposed to mean, but I've said it before, but it just smells like a good smelling, clean girl. Wears pleated skirts and has her hair done very simply, very minimally. She's very elegant, she showers. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing, it just, oh my gosh, you guys. It just smells so pretty. I just love it. I'm so happy to have this one. Um, so yeah, the Peony and Blush Suede, this is like, great such such a good addition to my collection I really really like it and I'm so happy that I finally am starting to dig into these beautiful bottles because I've wanted Jo Malone's on my uh, perfume tray for ever since I knew they were a thing for a long time and I just hadn't found the right one for me so yeah I love this one so when it comes to the Woods Cajun Sea Salt, you guys, I still am not um, regretting getting this one. I still really like it. I am in the 60-day window for exchanges and 30-day window for returns if I decide that this doesn't work for me because I did get it from Sephora, and they're so great. They do take returns if something doesn't work out. However, I'm really liking this one as well. I wouldn't say, I mean, when I smell it, I don't get the same like visceral reaction that I get to the peony and blush suede. It's not like a gut reaction where I'm like, oh my God, I love it so much. But I do really like this one, you guys. So this is a very um, woody, um, herbal fragrance. It's a little bit spicy. The sage that's in there, when I first spray it, the sage that's in there is a little bit overpowering sometimes for me. However, on the skin, you guys, this dries down and becomes something different. It changes. I think there's beca it's because there's ambrette in here. So this does change and become a little bit more like musky and sweet. It kind of becomes more of a skin-like musky sweet scent. And it is just really, really refreshing and really beautiful. And it smells like an effortless kind of a girl who's wearing an effortless look and she has on a white t-shirt and some basic, you know, blue jeans, just like a very effortless, chic, everyday, warm weather kind of look and a little bit beachy vibes too. And very sensual in the sense that it smells very natural. It's not like a sexy perfume, but it's very like natural kind of. And I do actually have it on my arm here. The performance is not great. It doesn't last a really long time. I would say by about that three hour mark on my skin, I would need to reapply. On clothing, it lasts a little bit longer. That's the good thing about the Jo Malone's is if you do spray them on your clothing, they will give you some more wear than just on your skin. But on the skin, you guys, it does become quite a lot sweeter and it becomes a little bit more skin-like and musky and I really, really like that. So it's, I think it's gorgeous and it's a really good layering perfume as well. You could layer this with, I think any of the other Jo Malone's and it would just be really beautiful. I have layered Woods Agency Salt and um, Peony and Blush Suede together. They pair beautifully. I think that's what's really great about the Jo Malone's is that they are such simple compositions. They only have a few notes with the exception of some of the other ones. They're so simple that when you combine them, you can create a really beautiful, unique scent. And so I'm, I'm still quite liking this one. I can't say it's like, 10 out of 10 favorite, but I'm not ready to think about letting it go, return it. Um, yeah, I still really like it. And like I said, I'm really liking that softer, more like refined, simple fragrance. Okay, where should we go to next? Let's talk about another one that I'm kind of wondering if I should have bought it or not. And that is the Marc Jacobs Decadence. So, it is in this beautiful, beautiful packaging with this really heavy duty chain and the nice little fringed detail. Resembles a handbag, heavy bottle, but the lid stays on there really well. This is a discontinued fragrance from Marc Jacobs. Let me take the cap off. So that's it with the cap off. This is such a stunning bottle, you guys. I mean, how beautiful is this green? I love the color green. It's one of my favorite colors. Oh my gosh, so 
Uh, why do perfumes play such mind games with us? So this fragrance is so unique and so interesting and this one is discontinued. So it's, it's never been a favorite, favorite perfume of mine. I have liked it since I first smelled it. I've always really liked it. It's very deep. It's very decadent. That's the perfect name for it is, is decadence because it is very decadent smelling. It's very rich. It's very sweet. Um, incredible performance, but you know, I just don't think I'm ever gonna wear this, you guys. Like, I rushed out and grabbed this bottle when I heard it was gonna be discontinued because I thought, I need that one. If it's gonna be discontinued, I need it because I've never smelled anything quite like it. It's very strong, it's very bold. Um, it's just one of a kind. It's a very unique fragrance. It's green, it's vanilla. I think there's actually some plum in here, which normally I'm not really a fan of plum. Um, it's very earthy. I think there's actually vetiver in here as well. This is kind of like a green version of La Belle. Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle, this is the same in terms of its monster performance. It's the same in terms of its earthy, it's sweet. But this is more of a kind of a purple fruit, and green version where La Belle is more of like vanilla and pear. But I just don't think I'm gonna wear it, you guys. I haven't worn it since I bought it. My boyfriend does not like this one. I've worn this on dates with him. He does not like it. Um, and I just, I don't know, like, and yet when I smell it, I think, wow, there's nothing quite like this. I haven't smelled anything quite like it. But I think for me, I think part of the issue is that it's a little bit almost like obnoxious. Like it's, it's just really strong, really potent. It's like the polar opposite of something like peony and blush suede. <laughs> like these two perfumes are polar, polar opposites. And I'm so liking the refined quality and like the subtlety of something like this. Um, I don't know. I just, it's just not going to work out for me. You guys, I don't think I'm going to wear it. I don't know what to do. Honestly, I don't know what to do because I'm not, I don't want to collect fragrances. Like I don't want to keep it just because it's discontinued. Um, just for the sake of having it. I don't know if that's, if there's any point to that, there's probably someone out there who actually wants to wear this. I'm not going to wear it. It would just sit there. It would be admired. I would look at it and think, oh yeah, that's that amazing fragrance that's discontinued that I never wear. Like, I just don't know if it's worth having. So that's where I'm at with the decadence. Um, haven't really enjoyed wearing this since winter of 2000. I think it was like 2019 is the last time I actually wore this and, um, yeah, it's just not working out. So that's decadence. I'm not sure if I should declutter that one. Okay. So let's talk about another bond nine fragrance that I have a sample of, and it is beautiful. You guys, and I almost bought a bottle. I'm just trying to be financially a little bit more frugal because I am going to be going shopping in the near future to a larger center. Like I said, where I can smell diptyque by Rado, Holt Ren, or Holt Ren, oh my gosh. Um, Joe Malone, all of these other fragrances and I, and all of the MFKs again, and I really don't want to go crazy. So I have held off purchasing purchasing this fragrance from Bond 9, but just know it is full bottle worthy and it's beautiful and I'm going to stick it in my back pocket. And that fragrance is Madison Avenue. So Madison Avenue comes in this really fun pink bottle with the black bow. It gets really good reviews. This is one that I ordered a sample of and you guys, this is so gorgeous. It had me right from the opening all the way through to the dry down. I fell in love with this at first sniff. Like I said, I actually, I actually think I did put a bottle in my cart and the only reason I didn't go through with it is because I thought no. It is literally $500. Wait until you've been to the city and smelled all the other fragrances before you make a decision because maybe there will be something I like better. This has notes of apple, blackberry, and bergamot in the opening. In the middle, you have rose, jasmine, and magnolia. And in the base, you have patchouli, praline, and ambroxan. And this fragrance, you guys, when you first spray it, you get this burst of green apple. It's very fresh. It's very invigorating. Actually, I didn't even pick up on the apple until I looked at the notes. It just smelled very well blended, very fresh, very invigorating, fruity, very bright, uplifting, cheerful, happy, energizing, summertime, the sun is out, you're going to the gym, it's a hot day, that kind of perfume. And then there are these 
subtle florals that come out in the middle, mostly that rose and that jasmine. There's a little bit of magnolia in there. And then the dry down, you guys, and I do actually have this on my other wrist and the dry down of this is so heavenly. Ugh, the dry down is so pretty. So in the dry down is when you get that little bit of praline coming through. Just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance, you guys. And I, like I said, I almost bought a bottle of this. This is definitely worth checking out, especially if you like your fruity florals. If you like Delina, if you like a Trap Rev from Louis Vuitton, this is definitely one to check out. I think that it is right up there for me with Louis Vuitton, or with a Trap Rev and with Delina. Perfect for summertime, very elegant, and at the same time, very fruity and invigorating. So really, really like that one. Definitely recommend checking it out or getting a sample if you like those kind of perfumes. Hey guys, so I'm just interrupting myself because I don't know what happened to the Eau Du Well clip, but it completely disappeared, but you might've noticed Eau Du Well sitting on the tray. And I did want to update you and let you know that I have absolutely zero regrets with bringing back Eau Du well. I absolutely love that scent, you guys. Like I said before, I think it is truly a masterpiece. It's such a comforting, warm, green, woody vanilla. It smells like a enchanted forest with a little bit of vanilla in it. And I love the bottle and... I'm really excited because I will be visiting a Diptyque counter in the next couple of weeks and I'm super excited to check out more from the house. But yeah, my basic um, update on the Eau de well is that I absolutely love it and I'm really happy to have it. Okay, so there's only two left on this tray that we haven't talked about. One of them I am absolutely in love with and the other one I'm kind of like, mm, it hasn't been getting that much love from me. See if you can guess what they are. <laughs> so let's start out with the one that... I haven't been giving that much love to, and that is Dior Absolutely Blooming, believe it or not. So this one has actually been discontinued, and a lot of people are really sad about that, myself included. I was really disappointed to find out this was gonna be discontinued because it is a beautiful fragrance, and I feel like Dior is slowly weeding out their great fragrances. Um, so this one is a raspberry, pink pepper, fruity, um, yeah, it's so nice, rose, peony, and musky fragrance. I actually thought there was patchouli in here, but there isn't any listed, but, so this has a little bit of a powdery, sort of a lipsticky kind of a smell to it, even though there's no powdery notes noted, there's no iris noted, I definitely do get a little bit of that powdery, lipsticky kind of vibe, and it's just, it's just very feminine. It's very feminine, very soft, very beautiful. Smells like um, a lovely feminine girl who's wearing a pink summer dress. It's very, very nice. So I really can't say why. I can't put my finger on it, but I have not lusted after this fragrance lately. I have not been wanting to wear it. I will say that this is a new bottle. This is brand new and the juice has not matured all that much. And I know that when this perfume does mature, it becomes stronger and heavier and a little bit more powdery, which I do like. So maybe this one just needs to mature a little bit. The juice has gotten a tiny bit darker since I purchased it, but it definitely has a long way to go. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure I wanna keep it to wait for that to happen because it is discontinued. So even if I let this mature and say at that point, I still don't wanna wear it that much. Well, now all I've done is wasted a bottle of perfume and let it get old, right? So I don't know if I wanna do that. It's very, very pretty, but to be very honest with you guys, if I'm gonna wear a fruity fragrance for the summertime, I'm gonna go with Delina or a Trap Rev from Louis Vuitton. A Trap Rev from Louis Vuitton is probably my favorite fruit chuli fragrance, aside from Miss Dior. Um, it's fruity, it's floral, it's peony. It has everything this has, but it's more special. It's more unique. It also has cacao, it has lychee, so it has that really sweet tartness that I just love. I love these like tart, juicy components. This is sweet, but it doesn't have that like tart, juicy component. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just not giving this one the love that it deserves. Uh, absolutely blooming. And because it's discontinued as well, I don't want this to become a favorite that I then cannot find in the future. So I am thinking of decluttering absolutely blooming. I know that's going to sound kind of crazy because I was so appalled to hear it was discontinued and all that stuff. But honestly, you guys, I still prefer Miss Dior 2017, which I have backups of. I just don't know if this is worth investing in for me at this time. So yeah, this one I have not been 
reaching for and it'll probably go. So that's Miss Dior absolutely blooming. Okay, so that leaves us with one more perfume on the tray and I thought it would be fun just to grab an oldie but a goodie, one that I have been wearing lately that I still really love and why not? Why not tell you how much I still love this fragrance? So this is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. This perfume, you guys, never fails to impress. It just never fails to impress. It never fails to make me happy. It is so good. I still love this so much today, just as much as when I first got it. Um, yeah, it'll be two years in a row having this fragrance this winter, and I am obsessed. I'm still obsessed with this one. You can actually see how much is missing. Um, I've used about probably 15% or so of the bottle, which is pretty good for me because I do have a lot of perfumes. It takes a lot for me to make a dent. Um, and I have actually fully used up the decant that I made myself and brought on vacation. This was my choice for a vacation perfume when I went away last summer. It was perfect. This is a cardamom iris vanilla fragrance. So it is a little bit woody, it's a little bit powdery, um, it's a little bit soft spicy, not in a masculine way, not in a wrinkle your nose and sneeze way. It just kind of smells like, it's gonna, this is gonna sound bad, but it smells like old floorboards or old walls in some sort of a burlesque place where there's a lot of very sexy feminine women dancing around wearing red lipstick. That's what this is. And by the way, that was what the marketing was for this as well. It was supposed to be like inspired a little bit by, I believe by burlesque. I think I'm not making that up. Um, but this just is incredible. It's incredible. My boyfriend loves it. He thinks it's super sexy. I feel like a million bucks when I wear this. I should feel like a million bucks. It cost an arm and a leg. This is one of the more expensive perfumes I have. It is a 90 ml bottle, I believe, and it was about $430 or something to that effect. Worth every penny. Like if you only buy one vanilla perfume this year, buy Luby Rouge, you will not be disappointed. If you like a powdery woody vanilla, you will not be disappointed. I just love it. So I actually sprayed this on for a date night the other night and it just never fails. It's like, what else can I say? It just, and that's exactly what I thought. And that kind of inspired to do this video, inspired me to do this video is I remember thinking when I sprayed this on, this perfume just can't go wrong. It just can't go wrong. So, um, yeah, I absolutely love it. That is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. And yeah, that is my thoughts about all of these fragrances, you guys. And yeah, I hope that you enjoy hearing my thoughts about them. I hope you enjoy these little like perfume updates. I think it's fun listening to what other people think about their fragrances, which ones are on the chopping block, which ones are still wowing them or that they're really happy they bought, stuff like that. And it's just kind of like a fun video idea. So, and that's what it's about after all is refining my collection and curating and getting down to my top favorites. And when I have perfumes that make me as happy as Eau Duel or Peony and Blush Suede or Luby Rouge, when I have perfumes that make me that happy, why hold on to something that I'm struggling to wear? Why, you know, why try to force myself to love something? It just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, that is really about it for today's video, you guys, and thanks for watching. So that was it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you really enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances. I would also love to hear your thoughts on some of them down below and also just your own personal collection. Do you have any fragrances that you loved when you bought them and now they're kind of just sitting there not getting a lot of love? Um, yeah, just any thoughts that you have down below would love to hear and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye for now.